China, unlike our country, doesn't really have a judicial system where the companies get to debate or present their position. The Chinese government can change the rules at any time. And we were living under a mirage where we thought they wouldn't. We thought they would handle Hong Kong with a delicate hand. We thought they would be open to cultural products like our movies and music. And we thought they'd have an open mind to democracy and freedom of speech and newspapers. And it was all trending in the right direction. And that our great engagement, the great engagement of the past two decades, us investing in factories there and creating the iPhone there, as well as them doing promotions with the NBA, our movies making their way into China. We thought all of this was heading in the right direction. And then we saw them trample over human rights in Hong Kong, put 3 million Uyghurs in jail, and start the great unraveling of their entrepreneurial movement. So we've covered the CCP crackdown for the last couple of weeks here as we move to doing a little bit of news before uh, we do interviews on the podcast. And so let's cover some of the moves. And really, today, Tencent, which is an incredible conglomerate in China that owns many different companies and has investments in many American companies, is now trading at $56 a share. It's down 20% over the past three days and down almost 50% from its February high of $99 a share. They've lost $150 billion in market cap over the past three days. Basically, they lost a, a Coinbase and an Airbnb in a couple of days in terms of market cap. It, it, this is a very serious situation. And it's tanking for a couple of reasons. Number one, the CCP ordered Tencent to end exclusive music licensing deals with record labels around the world, according to the BBC. So China is cracking down on Tencent's music rights monopoly, if you don't know. Uh, and I didn't before I read the story. Tencent bought China Music Corporation in 2016, giving it the rights to more than 80% of all music tracks in the Chinese market. And according to China's State Administration of Market Regulation, every week we learn about a new governing body in China. This is called SAMR, SAMR. This was an unfair advantage over its rivals. Uh, and so thinking about that for a second, we're sitting here talking about the different frameworks for antitrust. We're having a grand debate about it over the last decade. Is big tech getting too big? Are they helping consumers? Are they hurting consumers? And is there any kind of angle to stop them from getting bigger? And it, is that in our best interest or not? We're having this like really vibrant debate across administrations, across political lines, in the private sector, in the media. It's fantastic. We, it's a really vibrant democracy where you can debate these things but not in China. From the BBC article, here's the quote, the company and its affiliated businesses have been told they can no longer engage in exclusive deals over music rights and must dissolve any existing agreements within 30 days. This would be the equivalent of our government, Biden, just saying, you know what? I'm going to send you know, the FTC, the FCC, whoever, over to Google, over to Apple and say, you know what? Yeah, you can't put uh, Google Flights at the top of your search results anymore. In fact, you can't have Google Flights. Just take it out of the product or going to Apple and saying, you know what, your deal with Google for exclusive search on Apple iPhones, yeah, that's canceled. Uh, and it's got to be canceled within 30 days. There is no recourse here for these companies. The recourse is, if you don't do it, you go to jail and get reeducated. That's basically what happens is you disappear. So for people who were scared about China as our adversary and our contemporary, and that really is the big picture, should we be concerned about this or should, is this actually a win for the West? I, in a way, think this is a win for the West because now China is saying any success you have, we can take away from you. And I think that makes it uh, very untenable for investors from around the world to invest in China, which they've been coveting for a long time. So China's now taking away the ability for Americans to invest in these companies or anybody around the world, the Saudis, whoever. Who wants to play in a casino where they can change the rules and all of a sudden queens are stronger than aces and aces are weaker than kings? I mean, they're basically just shuffled the deck and just changed all the rules. Uh, in addition to that, Tencent also has a large investment in the education industry in China, which is a booming space with lots of companies because the Chinese are so focused on education uh, and people are willing to pay for it. And uh, this Chinese education space has just been decimated. Uh, we started talking about this on Friday. The CCP is banning companies that teach school curriculum subjects from making profits, raising capital, or listing on foreign stock exchanges. So let's pause for a second there. Imagine in America, we said, you know what? That test prep company, 
uh, or that after school, Kumon, I think it's the after school uh, math classes or the Princeton Review uh, coaching you on your uh, GMATs or your SATs, all that now illegal. <laughs> you cannot make a profit from that. And any companies are now nonprofits. I mean, and then how do you unravel that? If these companies went public and they raised money from the private sector, do those people just lose their investment? What happens to all those assets? Maybe they bought a bunch of computers. They have cash in the bank. Do they buy the shares back and then shut down? There is no orderly process here. This is happening at an alarming pace. It's happening at an alarming pace. And the Chinese government is a really well thought out, considered organization. They are thinking in centuries, not quarters. So they're throwing away massive amounts of wealth and influence on a global basis. Why? What is going on here? And that, that's really the question we need uh, to answer. Now, Tencent owns a 20% stake in this Chinese live touring app, uh, which is called Uan Fudao, which was valued at over 15 billion in October of 2020. Uan Fudao. Uh, had raised four billion from investors, and ten cent stake is worth over three billion, or I should say, was worth over three billion, uh, and now it could be worth zero dollars, according to the Financial Times. Other big players in China's education industry, BlackRock, Bally Gifford, Sequoia China, and SoftBank, they're all now, I guess, going to have to figure out what do they own and, and what do their LPs own. So, speaking of SoftBank, they suffered a four billion dollar loss on their DD position following the CCP removing Didi from the App Store for a cyber security review. That meant that new users couldn't use the product. SoftBank owns 20% of Didi, and their stake was worth $12 billion at the time of the Didi IPO. And after China's cyber security review and rumors of Didi's pending punishment, SoftBank's stake is now worth $7 billion. So this is having ramifications. Now you have China and Saudi Arabia, which is the big backer of SoftBank. Now they are getting penalized for what's going on in Beijing and with Xi Jinping, like what's exactly happening here? This is going to result in a lot of phone calls from people whose bank accounts are being impacted. And China obviously knows that. TikTok's parent company, ByteDance, they had recently hired 10,000 employees, according to the information, to work on education projects because it's such a huge opportunity. And now they are in danger of basically having to let those employees go or reassign them. According to the article, here's the quote, some ByteDance employees who work on the company's tutoring apps are already asking around for other job opportunities outside of education because of concerns that Beijing's crackdown could force many services to shut down. So plans uh, are changing fast in China. As I said in my piece from 2016, five years ago, it's a rigged casino, it's opaque, and you have no recourse. If you're betting over there, you're taking a lot of risk. You know that going in. It's kind of like going into a card game in you know Hollywood, run by a bunch of CD characters. I used to get invited to these kind of crazy games, Molly's Game, etc. And who knows if Molly's Game was corrupt or not? I never played in it, but I was invited a bunch of times. It, who knows if people were playing from the same chip stack, right? You could have all of this collusion going on, and you would never ever know. And that is the challenge here. Uh, you're going into a market where there isn't the rule of law, where there isn't a legal system. Every startup needs to ensure they own their intellectual property, or IP for short, and that starts with filing your trademark. I have been filing trademarks for 30 years, and I know what I'm talking about. It's one of those things that people forget to do or they put at the bottom of their list, and I understand that. It's a pain in the neck, but it is not a pain in the neck anymore. If you don't know where to start, look no further than BrainBase File. It's a clean, simple, and automated trademark filing platform that gives anybody the ability to protect their best ideas. There is no need to spend thousands of dollars on lawyers to file your trademark for you. No. Now you can do everything yourself in just a few easy steps. BrainBase File gives you goods and services recommendations using AI. So you can avoid the back and forth with the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, USPTO, and you can eliminate human error. They also offer full transparency into the USPTO process with step-by-step -step notifications and real-time updates on your trademark's approval. This is a process, folks. So save a ton of money. Just head to brainbase.com slash twist and enter the code TWIST at checkout to file your first trademark now for just $169. That's a 15 
15% discount. That's right, brainbase.com slash twist and enter the code twist at checkout to file your first trademark now for just $169.